market slowdowns have been in the news and you know we're hearing things that it could be potentially transitioning to a bit of a buyer's market. Now, is that really the case? Is it in fact a buyer's market in Durham region right now? Hey everybody, Rob Marsiglio here with the Robert Marsiglio Realty Group uh, servicing Durham region. And I'm here to provide you with a bit of an update on what's going on in the market. Before we get into that, if it is in fact a buyer's market, I want you to subscribe to the channel. If you like all things uh, market analysis and maybe some fun tips, useful tips to sell or buy properties, this is the place for you. And I wanna see you keep coming back. If you like the content of this video, please hit the like button and feel free to share it with some friends. Uh, you read a lot of stuff out there in the media. We wanna make sure that you are getting a numbers-based approach to make a smart decision on whether it's the right time for you to buy or sell a home. So. What's going on in the Durham market right now? Is it in fact a buyer's market? There's a few key numbers we looked at as realtors and we keep an eye on these things you know, daily, weekly, monthly. And that's kind of what helps us stay informed as to what's going on and whether buyers have the upper hand or sellers. And this can swing very dramatically. You know, For maybe a couple weeks in a super hot seller's market, it could turn to a bit of a buyer's market and vice versa. We haven't seen a true buyer's market in the GTA, let alone Durham region, since probably 1990s. Um, it's been sellers, sellers, sellers really ever since then. But again, every once in a while, a little opportunity presents itself. And I think that we are maybe in one of these opportunities right now, but let's take a look at the numbers as, as to what's happening. So if you look back uh, for the four weeks of February, you will see that the average price points in the Durham region as a whole, and this is for freehold properties, they capped at just over 1.3 million. So you were seeing uh, 1.33 million, you were seeing 1.32 million, 1.37 million, uh, 1 1.3 million for each week of February. As soon as we hit March, and we all know that in Ontario and Durham region, March break kicks in, weather gets a little nicer, sometimes, maybe just for a day at a time. Uh, and there's other factors to it right now, especially uh, COVID restrictions being eased. Um, maybe people taking a bit of a break from what's been a super hot market. So we did see the prices kind of, I don't want to say plunge, but definitely take a little bit of a downturn. So week one of March, those prices came down to 1.23 million. Uh, week two of March, they came down to 1.22 million. So what was driving that? What has been driving that? Again, a whole number of things. The first number that I want to look at to try to help explain what's going on is the sales to new listings ratio. So we've just come out of a market where we we're experiencing a super, super, super tight inventory of properties, of new listings. People wanted to get into the market. There just wasn't anything for them to buy. You know, picture you're at your favorite grocery store and it's pizza night in town and there's one block of mozzarella cheese left and everybody's fighting for that one block of mozzarella cheese. Weird analogy maybe. That's kind of what we've been going through in the uh, Durham region market as well as kind of the rest of, of the GTA uh, for a while now. So in February, just to give you a snapshot, again, this is freehold properties. We're not talking about condos right now in, in Durham. Uh, freehold really drives the market out here. Uh, we had over 1,400 new listings in February, and we had 970 so odd sales. So if you look at that as a percentage, that's saying that about 68% of those listings sold, activity-wise, okay? The, the sales number represents 68% of the total new listings number for, for February. So far in March, and this is for the first two weeks, We've seen uh, just under 1,000 new listings, so 967 new listings, and we've seen 590 sales. So that 590 sales represents 61% uh, of the total new listings. Again, that's a 7% drop so far over the first two weeks. Could this be because buyers are busy doing other things over March break, uh, a little bit of burnout, maybe some 
They want to see what interest rates do to inflation in the market, how the situation in Ukraine is going to affect things over here. It could be, but it's just, it's what we're seeing. It's a definite slowdown. We may not know the uh, exact cause of it quite yet, but it's a slowdown nonetheless. The second thing that we're going to look at is going to be the average uh, sale price to list price. So what on average are properties selling over list for? I, I know in the media it's been bidding wars. You're seeing articles about properties selling for $300,000 over ask. Uh, realtors are kind of floating that and, 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 and showing that off. Hey, look, I sold this property for $500,000 over asking. Um, truly, you, you need to understand that the strategy is to list low to bring more activity, agree with it or not. It's, it's a marketing tactic that realtors are using. So if we go through February and what those percentages looked like for the four weeks, we saw houses selling on average for, um, you know, 35% over asking uh, to 30% over asking, let's say, throughout the entire month. In March, while it's still probably higher than you'd want to see it, like I'm not saying listing prices are fair yet. And when I say fair, I mean fair market value. Like it's not an honest representation of what the seller's expectations are. But that number's come down to uh, 28%, uh, 25%. So you're starting to see that number come down from the highs that it was at. Uh, I think it peaked out at around 36% at one point. Um, so as we start to see that number come down, that's another indication that, hey, it could be a bit of a buyer's opportunity market. What about straight activity? That's another metric that we'll monitor. We may not broadcast it quite as much. It's not readily available uh, data that you'll see maybe published in the media. But when I say activity, I mean a new listing hits the market, how many people are going to see that property, and then how many people are putting offers in on offer night. So in February, for every new listing or every listing that hit the market, it was being shown on average to 19 different parties. Okay, so 19 groups of people were walking through your home on average when you listed it. Go forward to March now, that number's come down about 20% to uh, 15 parties. It's still a lot of traction, but you know, that, that's, that's a significant amount. Um, if you're seeing, you know, upwards of 80 showings in extreme cases, it's, it's a much more drastic change when that's coming down to, you know, 60, 64 showings instead. So the other number we looked at was offers and this was, uh, you know, buyers were getting a little scared. Like I'm working with buyers and it's like, hey, offer night tonight, there's 15 registered already. Wow, that's gonna definitely affect a buyer's mentality and say, I've gotta pay a little more to make sure I get this place. Um, so again, on average, this is the average, this is the grand scheme of things. This is taking into account some properties who didn't get offers on offer nights, even in the February market. But on average, you were getting two offers for property, and now you're only getting about one and a half. So let's look at that in percentage decrease, that's 25% down. So again, take that example a little bigger. If you're getting 15, 20 offers on an offer night, now you're only getting 11 offers, 15 offers, and in some cases, for the first time in weeks, I'm getting phone calls from listing agents of properties that I've shown saying, hey Rob, are your buyers gonna be bringing in an offer tonight? Before, they were just kind of sitting back, putting their feet up. They did the work up front, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying they're lazy, but the offers would just come to them no problem. You could list it, people are gonna come, people are gonna put the offers in. You need to be working a little harder now to market those listings, to get those properties sold. Um, the last numbers that I want to look at are the activity in terms of canceled or terminated listings, price changes, suspended listings. So this is always a good indication of, you know, if you're seeing very few of these, it means everything in the market is selling. If you're seeing a lot of them, it means there could be a bit of a shift. You know, sellers may have to readjust their ex expectations as to what their home's worth. So for the month of February in the Durham region, and all of Durham, there were 211 price changes, suspended listings, which means we're gonna take it off the market and maybe put it back on in a week, and terminated. So combined, 211 altogether, okay? 
Now, I know that we've seen some more listing activity in March for the first couple of weeks than we were seeing in February. You know, it's, it's maybe even kind of plateaued a bit because we're going into March break, so-and-so. But we've already seen over 400, almost 420 um, suspended, terminated price changes. So that's just telling me, you know, sellers trying to cash out, maybe the ones trying to get out of the market, move up to something a little bigger. They thought this is the perfect time to put our place up. They may have missed the boat by, you know, a week or two now at this point. They're just not getting those those prices they were hoping to get uh, in February. When, when again, like I said, we were experiencing, I don't call it historically low inventory. We always go through a bit of a dip in, in those uh, kind of winter months. But again, the prices just aren't there for the sellers that they were necessarily expecting. So like I said, markets are so volatile, this could change again after March break. You know, I'm still expecting to see a flood of inventory. I'm not expecting prices to necessarily crash or bottom out. I think we've seen a bit of a shift towards a healthier seller's market is how I would classify it. So not calling it a buyer's market, still definitely a seller's market, um, but there are opportunities out there. And if you are a buyer, keep on going. We're gonna see another rate announcement happening in April. We'll see how that affects things, but for the time being, just keep on trucking, get out there, try and find that spot if it's the right time for you. And if you want to discuss that more with me, uh, I'm just a phone call away. So again, if you like this video, please hit that like button, uh, consider subscribing to the channel, share it with some friends. Uh, this is how I like to do things. I like to present the numbers. I like to, my buyers and my sellers to make informed decisions, have real, realistic expectations real expectations, I was making up a new word there, but just based on what is happening in the market, it happens quickly, let me look after the market for you, you just you focus on that dream house and uh, we can make things happen. So once again, all my contact info is down in the description below, please feel free to reach out and I look forward to sharing some more updates with you in the future. Cheers.